It is week one of college football, and we give you our three best bets for Saturday, as well as let you know how you can take home a piece of our $500 college football leaderboard prize pool, and it all starts right now. Hey guys, it's Matt from GrandSandBetters.com. We're coming off a 2-0 sweep from last week in week zero, and we have three picks for you today for week one. Also, don't forget about that college football leaderboard. It is now live. We are giving away a prize pool of $500 to our subscribers. Now, we'll get to that in just a little bit, but first, make sure, as always, you go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our college football picks all season long. While you're at it, smash that like button for the first full weekend of college football. It's finally here. And without further ado, let's dive in to our best three bets of week number one. The first game we're going to look at is between the Marshall Thundering Herd and the Navy Midshipmen. This game will pit a high-octane aerial attack uh, from the Marshall team off against an always fun-to-watch triple option uh, with Navy. Now, Marshall's going to have a chip on their shoulder considering how their 2020 season ended last year. They started last year 7-0, and but not only lost in the Conference USA Championship game, but they also lost your bowl, their bowl game, giving them a 7-3 and overall record. New head, head coach Charles Huff, he's going to have Grant Wells coming back for him at QB, uh, who threw for over 2,000 yards last season with 18 touchdowns. Wells has a very experienced receiving core coming back, one of which he does like to share the ball to. Now, this offense did lose their leading rusher, Knox, but he will be replaced by Evans, who is a great addition to also catch passes out of the backfield. With their entire offensive line coming back with the exception of Ball, Wells should again have plenty of time to hit his vertical receivers and improve on that 28.5 points per game last season. On the defensive side of the ball, they're coming off a great year. They only allowed 13 points per game, which was number one in college football. They gave up 95 yards on the ground, which ranked them fourth nationally, and only allowed 279 yards per game, which was second nationally. Their ability to keep opponents from reaching the end zone is really what made them stand out. They only allowed 14 touchdowns on 116 drives. The best part is eight starters are returning this year. Now, one of those that left was Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year, Devontae Beckett. But Marshall has plenty of depth in the D-line and secondary to continue to put pressure on teams from all angles. They're going to face a Navy team that is coming off a horrible performance last season, going 3-7. and seven. Now, last season they only averaged 177 rushing yards per game, which is easily the worst numbers ever posted by a triple option team. With just being days away from the start of the season, they still don't know who's going to be under center. Xavier Arline and Ty Lavate are battling it out, and in all honesty, no matter who starts, you should probably expect that both these guys are going to play in the game. Now, our line did start in two games last season and played well, so we think he'll get the nod, but we'll have to wait and see. Whoever is starting at QB on Saturday, one thing they will need is a better performance from their fullback, Carruthers, who only had 358 yards last season. Unfortunately, Navy lost its top two blockers and only has two starters returning to their offensive line. This team's going to struggle to put up points on the board again this season, so it will look to their defense to keep them in games. Now, last season, through seven games, Navy was given up 37 points per game and over 445 yards uh, per game. That uh, was awful. They need to fix that, and they did for the last stretch last season, where they only gave up 15 points per game and 246 per game. Uh, uh, yards, but with eight defensive stars returning, they're going to hopefully look to continue the success that they had late last season, now in 2021. This game is really going to come down to whether or not Navy's offense can get their triple option game going, and if they can, their offense should eat up the clock and not allow Marshall's dynamic passing game to be on the field long. However, with a limited number of reps their QB have taken and the O-line losing their leading blocker and only returning two, 
we think it might take them just a bit, a bit longer to get that offense going, especially against the second best defense from last season coming back with most of their starters. Our best bet in Marshall and Navy is going to be Marshall minus two and a half. You might even want to take it up to minus three, but I would leave it at that. So our first bet for week one, Marshall minus two and a half over Navy. Now, before we get into uh, our next matchup, just a reminder, we're hosting a college football leaderboard here at Grandstand Betters. The top three places will share a $500 prize pool. If you'd like to join, it's very simple. You just put your three best college football picks in the comment section below each Friday to Saturday between 7 p.m. and noon. The deadline is noon on Saturday. All you have to do is read through the rules in the pinned comment as there are some restrictions on what you can bet. Now, we are a week into our leaderboard, but there's plenty of time for you to catch up as this contest runs all year long. So make sure you put your best bets in the comments below and you'll be on our best bet leaderboard with your chance to win $500 prize pool. Now, a bit of housekeeping, that's all done. Let's get into our second pick of week number one. This matchup is gonna look at the 4.30 Eastern time slot and it's between the Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns. What a great name and the Texas Longhorns. Now, the Longhorns come into this game ranked 21st in the AP Top 25. It may actually surprise you that Louisiana Lafayette comes in ranked at 23rd. The Longhorns, however, are favored eight and a half here, and the over-under is set at 57.5. Texas is coming off a relatively disappointing seven and three season last year, even though they finished 20th in the rankings. They have been consistently good, but not great for the past few years, which for Texas, that is not good enough. They have a new coach, Steve Sarkeesian, and he's going to be looking to lead them back to a championship game, something they have not been able to do since 2010. He took this job literally a day after he helped Alabama win their national championship last year. He then added six assistants uh, that have either won a national title or have been to the college football playoff. Uh, a true QB battle happened this summer here uh, for Texas, but it does look like Hudson Card is going to get the nod here. Uh, a few days ago, it was announced that he will start the 2021 20, season under center. This is a surprising move by Sarkeesian as Hudson Card only had three pass attempts all last season. They will likely look to lean on their sophomore running back, Robinson, who set a school record for yards per catch last year with... Uh, 8.2 as a freshman um, yards per carry sorry not yards per catch 8.2 as a freshman in either case though Hudson will have a great wide receiver core to throw to with Joshua Moore Jake Smith and Jordan Whittington they will also have Troy O'Mary back this season who tore his ACL last year however he is going to not play in this first game so they will be without him now, the offense last year averaged about 43 points per game and should be able to put up points again this year. Although, if Card does not do well, there may be a short leash on him and we could see Casey Thompson end up with the job by year end. The Texas defense, they had a lot of potential last season, but ended up giving over 400 yards per game and they kind of instituted this bend-don't-break defense. So even though they let up 400 yards per game, they only allowed 28.5 points per game. Now, they lost three big components to the NFL draft in Ose, Graham, and Stearns. These are going to be huge uh, shoes to fill, especially since last year they only had more than two sacks in a game once, and that was against Oklahoma State. They should give the Cajuns a lot of faith. Uh, this should give the Cajuns a lot of faith in their offense. One uh, that put up 420 yards per game and around 35 points per game. Speaking of those Cajuns, they come into this season off the tails or on the tails of a 10 and one season, which was capped off with a win in the first responders bowl against Texas San Antonio. Their offense, as we just mentioned, does know how to put up points. However, they did lose their top two running backs. Elijah Mitchell was drafted by the 49ers and Trey Ragus graduated. Now that's over 1600 yards and 18 TDs they lost However, Chris Smith, running back, has shown in a limited number of touches that he can average 5.6 yards per carry. 
Levi Lewis, who had a very good season last year, is coming back for his fifth year under uh, center with most of the starting offense returning and a great wide receiver court led by Lacey and Williams. They should be able to, again, put up good yardage and points each game. Their defense last season really excelled in the pass game. They were number one in the Sun Belt with passing yards given up, only allowing four of 11 teams to eclipse 200 yards in a game. With 10 starters coming back this season, they should again excel against the passing game. However, this was primarily against a Sun Belt schedule, although they did upset Iowa State last season. So who knows, maybe an upset here? With the level that both defenses were last season and a Texas defense, that can give up yards and points. We like this to actually be a very high scoring game. In addition, Texas will finally be playing in front of fans. And with the, this being a top 25 matchup, they're gonna look to make a statement here. Even if they're up two scores late, look for Texas to continue to try to score. Our best bet here for Texas, Louisiana Lafayette is over 57.5. Now, the last matchup we're getting into is the primetime matchup. The game everybody's going to want to watch this Saturday. That is Clemson versus Georgia. The game's at 7.30. Clemson is a three-point favorite here. And listen, they're a little bit bitter from last year when they lost in the college football semifinal to Ohio State. Clemson comes into the season having lost Trevor Lawrence, leading rushing Travis Etienne, and leading receivers Amari Rogers and Cornell Powell who all went to the NFL. If this was any other team, it would be a rebuild year. However, this is Clemson, guys. Uh, Or it's playoffs or bust for this team. Taking over for Trevor Lawrence at QB is DJ Weungalele. I think Weungalele. I think that's how you say it. If, If it's something different, put it in the comments below. Who did start for Lawrence, if you remember, two games last season. He played very well, including throwing for... 439 yards, the most ever thrown against an opposing quarterback against the Irish. So we watched that game. He looked pretty good. Uh, Weun Galele is already a Heisman hopeful, and with a great receiving core around him, that's actually not far uh, stretched. Now, he's going to have Justin Ross to lead his wide receiver group, who was supposed to be a top wide receiver in the country last season, but was unfortunately diagnosed with a congenital spinal fusion. He was listed on the injury report, but it does look like he is probable to play tomorrow night. The other spot that needed replaced was at running back, and it appeared that Lynn J. Dixon was going to be uh, the best bet to replace ETN, but Kobe Pace was pushing him for that spot. However, out of nowhere, true freshman Will Shipley has looked like he actually might be the starter in week one. No matter who it is, though. The O-line does need to improve from a very inconsistent year in which they did not always give Travis Etienne running holes. That just tells you how good Etienne was last year. On a defensive side of the ball, they're returning nine of their starters to the defense, uh, a defense that only gave up 20 points per game and held opponents to 115 yards rushing per game, which was 15th in the nation. This defensive squad is going to have a chip on their shoulder, however. The last game these guys played in against Ohio State, they gave up 630 yards and 49 points. Ouch. Now, they're going to be returning four defensive linemen, a unit that last year averages sack every 8.5 pass plays. Their secondary is going to be even better this year with James Sklasky, and he's back for his sixth year and will be one of the best players in the country at the linebacker position. This defensive unit has a great stop rate, 75% stop rate last year, um, and they've only gotten more mature. But they're going to face a tough first test here in Georgia. Georgia's coming off an 8-2 record last season that included a win against Cincinnati in the Peach Bowl on New Year's Day. Now this team is a tale of two sides when it comes to the offense and defensive sides of the ball. Offensively, they're bringing back seven starters, including JT Daniels at QB, who started four games last season, threw for over 300 yards in half of them. They also have Zaymir White coming back, who's a top rusher from last season, um, who, like Daniels, played down the stretch. He actually had 100 yards rushing in three of the last six games. Uh, Karis Jackson is going to be back at wide receiver. Unfortunately, they will be without George Pickens, who tore his ACL in the spring season, or their offense would have just been that more dangerous. Now, the offense is going to be even better this year and will probably put up numbers that could win them a championship. And defensively, their front seven is one of the strongest in the country, 
only allowing 72 rushing yards last year, which was number one in college football. At this point, you're thinking to ourselves, okay, where is the weakness on this team? Well, their weakness would be their secondary. They lost their top four cornerbacks and have zero experience at depth in that position. Uh, even last year, with a better group intact, they still gave up 278 yards passing a game, which was 88 in the nation. Now, you would think that uh, they may be worse given turnover and experience that they have at the position, uh, but it's probably going to be about the same. I think Georgia is going to have a team who learns from their mistakes last year, but they're not going to be better. They're going to at least be the same in the secondary or worse. Now, this is by far the best game on the slate for Saturday, hence why it's in prime time. And there's some things to look at here. Now, Georgia hasn't started with a loss since 2013. Ironically, guess who that was against? That's right, Clemson. And Clemson has won six straight openers, last losing in 2014. Guess who that was against? Yeah, Georgia. So something's got to give here. This game, however, is being played in Charlotte, you know, home of the ACC championship game, you know, where Clemson has played the last four years and won. Uh, this is going to be a close game. We think it comes down to Clemson's air attack versus Georgia's secondary, and we think Clemson is going to win that battle. DJ uh, Lele, uh he's only going to excel even more in this next season, uh, and we think he's a little bit better than JT Daniels. Now, the secondary, it's a little young on the Georgia side to stop this Clemson team. So, our third best bet of the weekend, we actually like Clemson here, minus three. Guys, that's it for Grandstand Betters. Remember, join our football leaderboard by putting your best three bets in the comments below. Remember, please read the rules in the pinned comment. You must read the rules because you have to follow the rules. But, put those best bets in, join our leaderboard, Hopefully you'll take a home uh, or take home a uh, share of our prize pool. Over $500 is being given away. And as always, guys, sit back this week one, relax, enjoy all the college football, and we'll see you next week.